morning. I'm George Fitzpatrick. And I'm Teo Torres. So yeah, we had a pretty wet couple of days. Didn't uh, yeah, we, we did. <laughs> a lot of people buzzing about the heavy rain storm that went through part of the area, including lightning and strong wind and triggered flash flooding. So we do have team coverage for you this morning. Mike Desell is taking a look at what the state is doing to get people ready for these storms. Dirk Verdorn will be looking closer at what actually caused some damage in Oroville. Brian Hickey is tracking your wet morning commute, but we start with case 3 meteorologist Tamara Berg with another day of rain. Yeah, we're back to the rain cycle once again. Top of the six o'clock hour, a couple showers shuffling in and out of view here as we look at the radar scan. A lot of these uh, showers are drifting in and moving up from south to north. So we have been seeing the overall flow where things are quieter around Stockton and Modesto, but starting to pick up a bit more activity, especially along and north of Interstate 80, where you can see clearly here western Plumas County getting in on some light to moderate rain bands, especially over the town of Laporte right now. And then from Grass Valley along Highway 20, down parts of Interstate 80 as well. As you move through uh, Auburn and Colfax and even down in through Roseville had a heavier band of rain move through there just to the western side there of Folsom Lake. And you can also see a couple of showers here working up and down I-5 uh, right into uh, Arbuckle and then up and towards Calusa and drifting off towards Yuba City eventually. But the best rainfall for today is going to focus along the coast where you could already see some bands here of good moderate heavy steady rain uh, just west of San Rafael in and out of San Francisco area and uh, Pacifica area. You could see that that coast range is going to be the area that gets the best rainfall today, but that doesn't mean we're not going to be out of the woods yet in terms of rainfall for the valley floor. Notice the wind speeds are much calmer and expected to stay calm as we go through the day today. Temperature wise feels mild once again. Little change from the morning temperatures yesterday into today or into the mid and upper 50s currently for the Valley Planner today. We'll see daytime highs in the lower to mid 60s. Better chances for some steadier rainfall beyond noontime and in through early afternoon as well. Coming up in my full forecast, I'll also take you through which areas might even see some isolated thunderstorms develop later today. 602 is the time. Brian's been watching the roadways and a little damp out there in a few spots. Yeah, but still a nice morning commute. Uh, nonetheless, we've got an easy ride on Highway 50 right now. Looking good on Interstate 80s from Roseville down uh, through the Cap City Freeway or over the top if you're heading in that direction and out onto the causeway. No problems all the way out into the Bay Area uh, as I was checking in on that 80 corridor. So things looking good on that stretch for the 5 and 99 ride. No problems northbound out of Elk Grove into downtown Sacramento. And as we look a little bit further south towards Stockton, things looking good there after they cleared up a big rig that was off the road right near Roth Road. That was on the northbound side. Never saw much in the way of a delay behind that. And then through central Stockton and out Highway 4, no problems to report there. Taking a look through the Tracy Triangle, still no delays on 205, 12 minute ride there, 23 minute ride on westbound 580 and 99 northbound, a 13 minute ride between Modesto and Manteca. Here we are in Sacramento, no problems on our freeways, so no delays, drive safe. All right, thank you so much, Brian. So while we are expecting some more rain right now, parts of the valley are actually getting a bit of a break after that heavy rain created some flooding in some areas last night. Here's the scene on I-80 at Watt Avenue in Sacramento. Look at that. Our vehicle got actually stuck in the water there. Highway Patrol was out to diverting traffic in several areas as they dealt with stranded cars and trucks. I've come across a couple of areas where I took side streets just to kind of get around it because I didn't want to take the chance of going through and having the water, you know, be, uh, you know, above my, my uh, doors. And this is the scene around 65th Street at Folsom Boulevard. You can see the water coming up over the curb in areas. Drivers trying to navigate uh, that sudden downpour. And then check this out. This is some of the street flooding we saw in downtown Sacramento. It was so bad that uh, that is what it looked like out at Cesar Chavez Park. The park commuters were really the only way to tell where the road ended and where the sidewalk began. So much of the flooding was created by all the leaves that have been out there just jamming up those drains. So we found uh, this area out here by 30th and J Streets, and people were trying to keep those drains clear as much as they could just so the water would have somewhere to go. This is a tough time of the year to do that, however, because there are so many leaves, and of course the wind and the rain from the last oh, couple of days help. took a lot of them out of the trees and that left did. them on the ground. So the storm also packed lightning, and quite the lightning show for some, and that did create some damage in the community of Oroville. Here's a picture from Oroville police of one of the many uprooted trees in the La Palma Drive and La Crescenta Drive areas even lifted up the pavement there. Police report trees and large branches down across the city. So was it strong wind? Was it a tornado? Meteorologist <laughs> Dirk Verdorn is joining us now taking a look at uh, whatever it takes to figure that out. <laughs> 
Yeah, we're going to take a look at the, the scenario that we had setting up and what the possibilities are. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what it was like yesterday. This is between 5 and 6 o'clock yesterday evening, and you can see that line of thunderstorms that uh, was uh, right there going from the Sacramento area north through Yuba County and on into Butte County. So I'll zoom in to the area that we're kind of focusing on here near Oroville. And you can see one of the things, again, I mean, when you're looking at a radar imagery, you're looking at the rainfall. But what happens is that rain gets pulled around by the winds and so one of the things if you're looking for a tornado is you look for what's called a hook echo and uh, so this is a situation where you have a little hook into the radar returns here and so there's the potential that uh, that could be the case and so you have the circulation pattern associated with a towering thunderstorm that has the potential to create uh, a tornado another thing you look for is you look for wind shear and there is a little bit of shear that's a that little blue dot there you can see kind of right there below the hook that we're seeing so that also is an indicator that you have the winds that are are there uh, generating that shear that could possibly bring about a tornado. And then the other thing is location. You can see where La Palma is as in association with this thunderstorm as it was making its way through. So all those things kind of line up. The other thing you have to look for though is the direction that the winds are going. If everything's blown in one direction like this, then you know that you have straight line winds. If it's blowing out where you have it in one central location and all the damage is pushed away from that location, then you have a downburst wind. But if you have a situation where debris is going in all different directions, uh, being pushed all around, that's where you have the potential for a tornado. And so that's something that the National Weather Service, when they get called out to situations like this, they're looking for the direction and how the debris is, has been thrown around. So that's what we're waiting to see if they're going to uh, you know decide whether or not this was a tornado or other some other form of wind so that's what's going on here now back over to you all right good to know thank you dirk so yesterday's weather was a reminder of just how quickly conditions can change and create some potential danger now because of that the governor's office is highlighting what the state has been doing to prepare for the threat of flooding mike to is live outside of the capitol this morning to detail those key highlights including a new way and an option for you to help prepare for severe weather emergencies morning, morning mike yeah, and good morning, Teo and Deirdre. And yeah, as uh, we were dealing with covering localized flooding throughout this area, the governor's office sending out an announcement highlighting the key things the state has been doing to prepare for the threat of flooding. The governor highlighting that, uh, did you know, Californians can now text CA Winter to 20202 for access to a five-step guide on how to be storm ready. The guide is available in 13 different languages as part of an outreach to those in at-risk communities during the rainy season. The governor's office also highlighting how it has pre-positioned more flood fighting materials around the state, like 2.2 million additional sandbags. The state also highlighting that it approved $95 million to strengthen flood measures and help communities impacted by last year's flooding. That includes the Pajaro River area. Uh, that was one of those areas hit hard by flooding last season. Since then, the state says it has sped up construction of flood risk management in that area. Again, all of these just highlights of what the state has been doing to prepare for the threat of flooding because as we saw yesterday, even when it's not a widespread event, just how quickly localized flooding can start to impact your daily life. Live outside the state capitol, Mike Sell, KCI Ray 3 News. All right, thank you, Mike. 609 now, and don't forget about this important tool when you're getting prepared. The KCI 3 app can keep you tracking the conditions wherever you happen to be. Our interactive radar will allow you to zoom into your neighborhood and you can track what is heading your way by the hour, and it's free. Well, the holidays have arrived and your family will soon be on the way. Sometimes that comes with some stress of dealing with complicated conversations, push boundaries, add a cocktail or two, mm. boom. Pushed boundaries, is yeah. that what we call I, it? I, I, that's the buzz <laughs> yeah. thing these days. KCR 3's Melanie Wingo is here to help us keep the peace. Yeah, we went straight to an expert for ideas about how to handle and navigate this well, what can be a very anxiety producing time of year. And first off, that expert says that go into your celebration knowing that different generations, family members and belief systems also bring about different feelings. And it's a good idea to avoid conversations first and foremost about politics, religion, or financing, a good rule of thumb. Also go into your holiday gathering with positivity and humor 
good way to navigate it. Also, according to family therapist Kelly Richardson, figure out your boundaries ahead of time. Know what you feel strongly about speaking up on and what to just let go. Personality manages groups of people differently. And for some, it's, you know, they say some, for some people, the more is merrier and for some people, the more is scarier. And so we have to be mindful that everybody's handling it differently. And we want to go in with a game plan for what works for us and how to set our boundaries and how to have our plan on how to handle things in a way that offers us the peace that we want to create a, a pleasant holiday. And Richardson says setting boundaries is good for your peace of mind, but if you can do it in a communicative way versus a confrontational way, that's the way to do it. She says that being confrontational at that holiday dinner table is not the right place to do that. Reporting live in Old Sacramento, Melanie Wingo, KCRA 3 News.